So what's this? Something I've just taken off my lapel. A little sign that says Tim's. Hmm? Tim's. Oh, toys. That's neat, isn't it? A friend of mine designed this. Tim's toys. Two words when you slide the little piece back and forward and you put it on your lapel. And the toys I've bought today are from 1993, oh, 20 years ago, in a case here. The most difficult toy I've got in this is this extraordinary little spinning top from America from 1993. I've never seen it produced since then, and, and uh, I don't think it was produced much before then, actually. It was a very, very extraordinary idea, because this spinning top looks like one of those little piping things you have for a nozzle for icing cakes, but there's no hole in the bottom. But it's a good quality metal, and you have to spin it on the surface with a bit of a flick of the wrist, I'll see if I can stand up slightly, if I can make it work on me. On the surface like this. You um, wet the fingers in order to give yourself a bit of grip to it and spin it down. It's slightly hard to spin, it wouldn't start processing so quickly because it's running out of steam. But in the instructions they tell you you've got to be able to make it land in your hand, on the back of the hand, up and down the arm and I don't know what else. Too much for me. Someone who's more dexterous would have a go. So on spinning tops, I have at the same period of time collected a number of micro tops which Gutermann from Germany produced in a little case like this. These are beautifully turned out. The wood is just magnificent. It looks, it looks so nice too. But they all spin. And the smallest one is unbelievably small. Let's see if I can get into the form. Just look at that one. Unbelievable. It doesn't last very long because it's got so little inertia, whereas this has got quite a lot of inertia and lasts very well. But that, that spinning top that size is just unbelievable. They're made of a very high quality wood. A metal one is more satisfactory, and this is also but from a different source. A very nice miniature spinning top made of brass or bronze, I think it is. And when you put it on a surface and spin it. It's a technique I've got to learn. There we are. When it's spinning, it's almost stationary. If I can get it in the middle of the middle of the river, no, it's lost its inertia. If I'm really adept with this, I should be able to make it spin upside down, and then it looks magnificent when it's sitting on a stem like that. But that's uh, something I need to practice with. The other versions of spinners which I got at this time were these little ones on on um, metal metal spinning plates. This is the one that most interests me most because Martin Gardner uh, proposed in one of his books that you should make this up and then try and predict what's going to happen. If you are setting a bit of paper with those two diverging lines and you spin it around that axis there, as I've done here, what do you get? And something completely counterintuitive. You find that the middle of the line here, middle of the line here, becomes predominant and it creates two circles in the middle of the pattern and all the rest of it's going so fast and whirling past you you can't get any persistent division but those two points where the middle of the lines are there's enough continuity to be able to perceive them as a couple of concentric circles very strange and but what they are is two two lines and this other one also a very odd idea it's a very very spirally looking arrangement of little squares getting smaller or bigger when it's spun though it looks like a series of concentric circles and also you can see little checkered patterns in the, within the circles themselves. But the principal feature is a series of concentric circles and yet when it's stationary there's no circles there apparent. Very, very interesting effect. Some spinners at this time then was very much part of the feature of what I was collecting. Another part of this collection was optical illusions or optical effect toys. And this one was already an optical toy but this is a a flick book which has got the very early versions of the chaotic patterns, the Mandelbrot pictures, beautiful. And they twirl and whirl in a magnificent form. And it's just nothing but a little flick book. Fascinating. And another one is an extraordinary sign which seems to be meaningless. What does it mean? On the back is a little clue, miraculous sign by Dick Snake at his mountain craft shop. Well, the answer is you put it on something like a, a wall, stand back, and then half close your eyes, and you might have to freeze your video to see this, and then after a few moments, you suddenly see what's they called a ground reversal. You see white on red rather than red on white, or vice versa, and you'll see a word appears, miraculously. 
and then suddenly it disappears. Very strange idea, the miraculous sign. Then also at this time I was collecting the very first bunch of noise toys, electronic ones. I'd already been collecting toys like this, which is not electronic, it just makes a, oh, like I said, a giggling sound when you squeeze it. But all the other ones here have got little batteries inside, chips and make noises. This one, for instance, you've got little contact at the bottom when you put it on your hand. A tiny current goes between those two contacts when it's on your skin and it moves you cheerfully. Another version I had, you had to put this on your lapel, turn it on first of all. And when you walked, the movement of your body made the thing make a noise. It's a tiny little ball bearing. Sometimes it gets a little bit excited. The other one also is a little pal, this one here, which again, when you shake it up and down slightly, makes a nice oink of a pig. But it needs a little impulse up and down to make it work. I'll leave them on just for a bit of fun. And the last one was a lighter. Well, the lighter's inside, but the rest of it is electronics, of course. And when you light something, it automatically sets off the fire alarm. That's useful, I suppose, isn't it? So those all came out at that same period. And the last bit is what I call a mishmash of oddities that I always find interesting. For instance, an ashtray which says no smoking. I think that's a lovely counterintuitive or a kind of uh, paradox. No smoking here. And a beautiful craft toy version of the Klein bottle that we sell on our website. This is made by a friend of mine who's making them at the time. A Klein wine. You'd have to put something very small inside that to drink from it, but it's very, very nicely constructed all blown out of glass by one of his glass blowers in London. Superb. Then a simple craft toy, which I think has been out for a long time, or a simple plastic toy, where you put a little egg in the chicken, and when you want him to get the egg out, you make him lay the egg like that. And out comes a little egg from, from, from the bottom, exactly where they lay the eggs. Start it again, you put, him in, put the egg into his mouth. I think it holds a three, three or four eggs, actually. And then you push the top. And out comes the egg at the bottom. Very sweet. I also found a wonderful Japanese executive novelty. It's, a, it's, it's thin as a credit card. And yet this contains two writing implements, which is an astonishing bit of engineering. The top one is just a biro, or ballpoint pen in there, and it writes when you hold it and you can write with it. But the one at the bottom, which is quite amazing, the bottom part of the picture of Mount Fuji is a propelling pencil, which I find absolutely amazing. You see it better on the back when you're not distracted by the Mount Fuji. As I push and pull this bit here up and down, it propels a little bit of pencil lead out of the bottom there. Look at the size of it though. Unbelievable. So this is all in a little tiny credit card, which when assembled together made it look like Mount Fuji. And the last one was something I made a lot of fun with. It was a little company that offered to make any label you wanted for their trick boxes. And the idea was to entice you to open this. It was supposed to be some very rare puzzle, but you have to open it carefully in the dark. When you opened it, it went, <coughs> of course, one of the old rattlers. So obvious, isn't it? So 1993 was a very good year for me for uh, some very different, but very interesting, fun toys. Mm -hmm.